This picture was taken in Seoul, South Korea in 1988, shortly after the men's eight rowing final. The Canadian team was highly expected to win gold, but finished a disappointing sixth. Team member Jason Dorlin struggled for years after the loss, and his new book, Chariots and Horses, talks about that devastation and how he was finally able to come through it. Jason's here with us in studio. And, and you know what was really interesting? Watching you, watching that picture we just showed, mm. and, and the big sigh. Yeah. Even just looking at it now. Yeah. It, uh, I mean, it was just such a moment. It, it really changed the direction of my life and, uh, and had a huge impact. So. Early in the book, you discuss your outlook on racing and how mm -hmm. you viewed your competitors, okay? So I'm going to quote this because I think it, it says a lot yeah. about your mindset going into race. <clears throat> My process was to approach each race course as if it were a battlefield, each race as if it were a war, and each competitor as if he were an enemy. By the time a race began, I would have built up a good dose of hatred toward all of my competitors, and I would be burning inside to get on with it. How did this outlook affect you after 88? Well, it, it, was, it was my strategy, and, and I think it was the strategy of, of uh, and continues to be the strategy of so many athletes. And after Seoul, when, that, when the race went sideways as far as I was concerned, it was really coming to terms with, with that uh, devastating loss. And did you maybe then turn that hatred inward? Did you have feelings of hate towards you yeah, for, for, sure. for I, not getting the job yeah, done? Yeah, I think in, for about a year, I, you know, I relived that race over and over again and just constantly trying to ask myself, you know, what went wrong? And eventually, after about a year, um, the finger sort of pointed to me. And that was my own doing. And I just decided that I was the reason we lost. And... Uh, and I used that motivation to then try and come back in 92 and, and go again. And really then it was all about redemption, about getting even and proving that, that, it, that it was not my fault and that, that I was worthy of an Olympic gold medal. You were training. You were in the midst of training mm -hmm. for Barcelona. Yeah. And then, what, five, six months into it, mm -hmm. you decided to retire. Why? I think, I, well, inside I was... Uh, using that loss as my motivation and every day I relive that race as a way to to get even and I think emotionally I was just exhausted and the hatred and anger that had built up inside of me uh, in my second attempt was just starting to spill over into my everyday life and the way I was I was treating people and the way it was affecting me it just wasn't worth it uh, I really didn't like the person that I was becoming and I would think your family saw this firsthand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time. How did this affect your family life? Well, they were very um, supportive of, of my wanting to go again, and they understood why I wanted to go again. Because your wife's an Olympian as well. Right. Robin's a, a middle distance runner, was. And, um, but I didn't know her at the time. And, but my parents were supportive. But I think, uh, you know, the approach that they took was that I just needed to figure this out on my own. I think in hindsight, they wished that they had intervened and, and talked about what happened in Seoul more, but uh, they just didn't, so. Have you figured it out? Oh yeah, oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> I don't, uh, I mean, in no way do I, do I blame myself for what happened now. As a 47-year-old, I can look back and say, yeah, there were some things that went sideways that summer that resulted in that performance. And, and the way that I approach racing back then is nowhere near the way I approach, approach approach racing or coaching now. Well, that's just it. You're coaching now. So how do you take those life lessons, all that yeah. you've learned, and apply them, you've learned a few, yeah. and apply them to the people that you're coaching now? Well, the main way that I coach was really what I learned from Robin. Um, you know, her approach to competition was, was everything that I thought it shouldn't be. She focused on the journey of, of, of training and of racing. She didn't race to win medals. She didn't race to kill her competitors. She just loved racing. And me, on the other hand, I was all about the carrot. I was all about arriving at the end of the journey. And I never took time to enjoy the ride. So over the years of dating Robin and getting to know her and watching her philosophy work so many times, I really began to think, you know, there's something to this. And then in 2000, when she had to withdraw from the Olympic trials due to an injury, and I saw how gracefully she left the sport. I, I just thought, this philosophy is bulletproof. It is a wonderful strategy to achieve high performance. And it's a great strategy if things don't work out. Because in the, 
there's always something to celebrate, right? And if the focus is always winning and you don't win, then there is nothing to celebrate. But if the focus is to go out there and race your best, um, and you do that, but you don't win, then there is something to take away from that. So, so well said. What yeah. a pleasure to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice meeting you. All the best Thanks to you. Thanks very much.